Welcome to the Weightlifting Scoop. This is Travis Cooper and James Tatum, and we're going to introduce you to our new athlete, Rebecca Garden. All right, we got Rebecca here. Uh, we uh, she's a new person on the team, um, and uh, we had her come over here to start the podcast. And well, not just a person, James. She's a lifter on the team. For God's sakes! Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, well, listen to this. She has never had coffee with heavy cream before. Nope. It's a brand new experience for me. Yeah. So we poured her a cup of coffee with some heavy cream in there. So uh, how do you like it? It's not bad. It's probably the best cup of coffee I've ever had. She's making a face like, ah, you put me on the spot. It's terrible. (laughs) Well, when you hit a PR this afternoon, well, you're not even going heavy because uh, good news, you're going to be competing this weekend, right? Yep. I'm competing at the Summer Strong event in Columbia, South Carolina. Nice. Those guys over there are pretty cool. I've met them uh, quite a few times. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, so, so tell us a little bit about your background. Why did you decide to come and train with us? And uh, so I know that you train over at Mash Elite, right, uh, with Travis Mash? Right. Um, I was introduced to weightlifting about two years ago, but um, I kind of I had because I was in school, I couldn't train consistently. Uh, so I only trained when I came home from break and that kind of thing. And then I didn't start training consistently every day. And really commit to weightlifting until last summer. Nice. You made some pretty good progress since then, it seems like. Well, trying to. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what we're all doing. Yeah. Uh, what are your uh, numbers at? Your PRs? Right now, PR snatch is 74 kilos and PR clean and jerk is 94. 94. You just made that the other day, too. Yeah. Well, I just made both of them last Wednesday, it was. Last Wednesday. Good yeah. stuff. And I saw you clean 95, like. Four or five times the other day. Yeah. Was it Monday? Um, I think it was Monday. Was that a PR clean at the time? 95, yeah. That was a PR clean. So a PR clean, and you cleaned it, uh, we'll just say four times. It was a pretty substantial number of times. So training's uh, going good. Yeah. Just got to work on a couple things with the jerk, and should come easy. Yeah, the jerk's a pain in the neck. Yeah. Well, well, they say the jerk is a jerk. That's the old saying, right? <laughs> Uh, so you trained with Travis Mash before this, and I know, uh, he kind of holds you near and dear to his heart. He's a really nice guy, and, um, uh, you know, what was it like training with him? Um, it was awesome. Travis is, he's like a, a second dad to me, really. Um, he kind of taught me everything I know about weightlifting, and I also got to do some coaching for him and that kind of thing, so we're really close. Yeah, I think before you came out here, before you even tried it out, I saw a video of you clean and jerking uh, 91 kilos, which is the the big 200-pound mark. Yeah. And uh, it just seemed like he was so excited once you made that lift. He was. Uh, and it just jumped up and, like, was had all this energy. So uh, that, that training environment sounds like it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. It's a it's a really good environment. And Travis, if someone hits a, a big lift, Travis will even run up and, like, pick them up and kind of carry him around <laughs> it's kind of funny yeah we were talking about um how being an encouraging coach is important in weightlifting and, and uh we were talking about you know strengths and weaknesses of, of coaching the other day and uh it seems like you know one of travis's strengths is his enthusiasm oh yeah definitely especially i think for beginners that's important um really you're just trying to get the hang of things and just kind of become proficient and have fun uh, when you're starting out, so I think that's important to be encouraging. Yeah, it uh, it definitely helps out a lot. Um, so I saw a tweet that you had the the other day, something about uh, visualization. Yeah. You like to vis- visualize? <clears throat> um, I haven't done a lot of visualization up until uh, last night. I actually talked to a friend of mine, Coach Nick Horton, up at Asheville Strength, uh, because. Uh, the meat, the summer strong meat kind of was sprung on me recently. So um, I wanted to kind of be ready mentally for that because I tend to get a little stressed out about particularly snatches. 
Um, and then I don't really know kind of what's going on when I get up on the platform. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm a huge fan of visualization. Uh, pretty much that whole day before when I'm trying to make weight or that day, just to get my mind off of making weight, I'll just sit there and I'll visualize, uh, like all my attempts for the snatch and cleaning jerk. So I'm glad there's somebody else here that, uh, was yeah. interested in doing that. So I think it, uh, I think it really makes a big difference. Um, how uh, do you visualize, like, how specific do you go? Um, well, Nick told me to visualize kind of everything as much as I can, be as specific as I can, see it through my own eyes. Like, maybe since Travis is going to be there at the meet, like, well, look at Travis and then kind of look and see yourself chalking up and walking up to the platform and kind of get your grip and try and, like, feel it because you know what that feels like and then kind of go through the whole lift. So I guess with my name being Travis, uh, sometimes oh, sorry, need Travis to be a Mash. little more clear. But yeah, uh, so me, James, and Glenn are going to be going to the Pan Ams this weekend. And majority of the rest of the team is going to be competing at Summer Strong. Uh, so Travis Mash was nice enough to, uh, he, he's definitely going to be helping out with Rebecca. And uh, obviously they have a history. And I think he's going to be helping uh, counting attempts for the rest of the guys as well. So uh, we definitely appreciate that. And you know, we'll be in good hands with uh, the rest of the guys we'll be. Yeah, we uh, got to come up with another name for uh, Travis Cooper to uh, distinguish them, and we're talking about both of them at the same time. Uh, my wife sometimes calls Travis. She goes, what's T-Dog doing? And uh, so I was going to say we could start calling Travis Cooper T-Dog, but then I was listening to uh, weightlifting talk, and that's what they called Travis Mash the other day. Called him T-Dog. <laughs> so... We gotta come up with another nickname for uh, Travis Cooper. Well, my nickname is Dozer. Uh, yeah, Dozer. That's what we'll go with that one then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, did you not make seventy-five the other day? I swear, I saw you. You you, you missed it behind if you didn't make it. It was a, a miss behind. Yeah. Ah. All right. Well, uh, what about your squats? I mean, how? Well, first of all, how long did it take you to go from not lifting? to a 91 kilo clean and jerk, which is the big 200 pound mark? Um, I guess about, see, I, th I think I hit that in January or February this year. Mm -hmm. So um, if you don't count when that first year when I was just kind of sporadically training, I guess it was like seven or eight months. Okay. So if you do, even if you do count the, the first year, a year and seven months or so, that's still yeah. pretty impressive. And uh, you're a 75 kilo lifter, is that right? Right. Uh, what do you, you you don't really look like you're 75 kilos. Do you weigh? Are you a light 75? No, I I wake up in the morning. I'm about 74. Okay. So. Well, that's I mean that's fairly light, you know, to be a kilo under your weight class. But I guess that's you know that's significant amount over 69. But uh, training's going good. I know you hit some PR squats. So tell us about those. Um, I hit. 118 kilos for a set of five. I'm not really used to doing sets of five, so um, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I think the biggest number I'd had written in my notebook was like, I think 106 for five. So it was a big improvement. Yeah, that's a yeah, that's a pretty big improvement. Yeah, going for that one set of five, uh, you can really push yourself and kind of get an idea of how much weight you can actually handle, which I like about the max set of five. Yeah. I think I'm, I like sets of five now, now that I'm doing them. Well, uh, so with Travis Mash being a power lifter, having the, the power lifting background as well, what was your squat training like with him? Um, it kind of varied. He had us going through different cycles of squat. I think at minimum though, we would squat three times a week. There was a crazy week where we were squatting every day, lots of volume and heavy stuff, like with pauses, and it was crazy. But I think that helped in the in the long run. Using chains in there too. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. I used to use chains a lot before I uh, moved out here to Muscle Driver, and then uh, not so much since we've been here. Well, I guess what I was getting at is it is was it a lot of uh, percentage work? Were you working up to a heavy single often? Um, just trying to get an idea. Typically, you know, knowing, oh, he has a powerlifting background, I would assume some kind of periodization with percentage work, but I don't know. Yeah, we would. he would have us work up to a heavy single, 
usually, and then do percentages based off of that heavy single for the day. Okay, so three times a week you were working up to a heavy single first. Uh, I think, well, we did a heavy single usually once a week, and then the other days were um, not quite as heavy, more volume work. Okay, so. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Um, so yeah, actually, James, I've been, um, I've been trying to visualize, you know, even in my morning sessions, I guess I don't necessarily visualize the particular weight on the bar, but I try to go through, uh, the routine that I'm going to go through when I step onto the competition platform. Um, so, you know, I've been doing a little bit of that too. And I guess without thinking about it, I have done that in the past. Yeah, it's funny. Like a lot of the sports psychology stuff, uh, like I took a class in sports psychology uh, when I was in school. And uh, actually, Rebecca is a exercise scientist too. Where'd you go to school at? Uh, UNC, Carolina. UNC. Yep. Exercise science. We got quite a few of those on Team Muscle Driver now. But uh, back to my point, um, a lot of these like things that they go over in uh, sports psychology, if you're an athlete. You can relate to a lot of them. You can be like, oh, yeah, I've done that. And really, all it does is just puts it out on paper and says, this is what people do, and this is what works. And it kind of just reinforces you to uh, keep doing them. So a lot of the things, Travis, if uh, Dozer, Travis Cooper, if you went and read a sports psychology book, you'd be like, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of this. Like, I could have wrote this book. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's just really... Uh, They've just made good observations about what works and what doesn't. And uh, you, being a successful athlete, will find a lot of things in there that you've done. Well, damn, I need to write a book, I guess, uh, make a little <laughs> extra money. That's one of my goals in life is to uh, to write a book. I, uh, I was awake last night or two nights ago, and I couldn't sleep, so I was just laying there thinking about, uh, what am I going to write this book about? Just drawing a blank. Oh, I, I know what I'm going to write a book about, but... Uh... You know, so life goals, I mean, do you have any particular life goals, Rebecca? I mean, one of my life goals is to one day finish a marathon, you know, so not even necessarily related to lifting, just a random goal, throw it out there. Um, I want to see how far I can take weightlifting, and then I also want to see if I can become a good coach myself. Yeah, you know, there's not a whole lot of female weightlifting coaches out there. There is, there's Ursula. Um, out in Texas, and she's an awesome coach. Um, there's a couple of them out there. You know, I don't want to pop off a bunch of names because I'll forget somebody, but, you know, that's awesome. We need more female coaches uh, out there. Yeah, so I think there's definitely a, a niche I can fill that way. So. Do you want to coach, um, y you know, female lifters or just any kind of lifters? Or I want to coach weightlifters. I don't really mind if they're – Males or females, so either one. <laughs> any uh, interest in any other like athlete, athletic thing or general population or? Maybe I've coached um, kind of athletes of all different sports. Like at Mash Elite, we worked with uh, middle school and high school athletes of all sports. So I've I've had experience with all of different sports. But secretly, you're you're coaching these middle school and high school athletes, saying, "How can I make them a weightlifter?" Oh yeah, kind of. <laughs> subliminal weightlifting messaging going on like yeah that's good that's what uh weightlifting needs <laughs> travis does that too he'll be like you'd be a great weightlifter <laughs> to some athletes subtly the parents yeah. walk in he's like this kid would be really good at weightlifting you see that squat oh yeah should come in on thursdays when we do snatch and clean and jerk <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's funny i talked to glenn a lot and and uh and he was talking about that a long time ago like somebody will walk into the gym or he'll be at a crossfit gym and he's like sizing them up, like how good at weightlifting could this person be? You know? <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure he's got quite a lot of experience with that, with uh, Wichita Falls uh, weightlifting and all that. Uh, and he's come across some pretty good weightlifters in his time. Um, and I guess that's kind of what he did with uh, me and Mike and uh, Rebecca uh, out there at the tryouts, just watching. Well, he's seen you lift quite a few more times, I'm sure, just through Travis Mash. Yeah, Travis Mash sent him a lot of videos of me. Probably yeah. bugged him about it, me too much. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, that's good because yeah. uh, it gave Glenn a chance to uh, see how you lift and yeah. uh, get an idea. I'm glad he did it. Well, so it's unusual 
it's unusual for a coach um, to want to give up one of their athletes. So how did Travis view um, you trying out for the muscle driver team? Was it his idea? Was it your idea? And, um, you know, he, he definitely doesn't seem selfish about, you know, coaching you. He, he's really open to you moving here. So, Oh, yeah. Um, he actually proposed the idea to me last fall. And then um, ever since then, I kind of got it in my head that I wanted to join the team. And I'd seen your guys' YouTube videos and kind of tried to envision myself there and what that would be like. And he's actually, he think Travis Mash views this as like the next step for me. And he wants what's best for me as a lifter. So, Yeah, more coaches need to take that stance. A lot of coaches... They get a lifter, and then uh, the lifter decides they want to leave, or, or they don't take it upon themselves to to honestly say, you know, hey, it's best for you to train with these other people or train with this other coach, and that's awesome. Um, you know, weightlifting traditionally has been a selfish sport, but I think we've been talking about this a lot. As it continues to grow, people are going to find their spot uh, as weightlifting coaches, and I think that's when weightlifting is really going to develop. Oh, yeah. And I like uh, being coached by different people. I like visiting other gyms and kind of getting feedback from other people because sometimes they'll say they're saying pretty much the same thing that your other coaches have said, but they might word it in a way that makes more sense. And all of a sudden something's clicking and you're hitting PRs and moving more weight. So that's always good. Yeah, that's always a good thing. I like that. uh I've found a lot of that too, going to uh, different seminars with uh, different people, uh, like going with Glenn to his seminars and then go- going with Don to his seminars and just seeing how they correct uh, people's movements in totally different ways. And it's just kind of neat. It gives you a good perspective, a, a real well, well-rounded well perspective. Well, that that's what we've been talking about. You know, that's why Glenn has Don come up here. Uh, because he's not a selfish coach, and he wants all the lifters to do good. And so sometimes Don gives cues or, you know, I mean, you know, Travis has given you cues, Rebecca, over time that are going to help you out. You're going to think of them. You're going to remember them. And, um, you know, I know specifically with, like, Mike Zella and, uh, and, uh, and Tom, you know, Don was basically giving them cues saying the same thing that Glenn was saying. You know, I heard both of them what they were saying, but one of them clicked. Uh, So go out there, listen to different coaches, you know, obviously put emphasis on what one of the coaches says, like your main coach, but if somebody else is trying to get you to do the same thing and giving you a different cue to do it and it works, you know, stick with it. Don gives you no choice but to listen to him because he's right there next to you, like touching you. Yeah, like if you're not back on your heels, he's going to take his finger and he's going to push you right back on your heels. Don, it, he he's gonna die one day. He stands about three inches from the bar. I tell you what, I mean, you'll you'll keep the bar close or knock him out one. I can understand it if it was somebody small like Mike, where like Don is a little taller than Mike, and he can kind of get out of the way. The weight's low, uh, but then he's over there doing it to Tom, and Tom's like I don't know, six three, and Don's probably five seven, five eight. Yeah, but uh, he goes up there and he gets right in there and. Uh, does a good job correcting. And I think that's another, that's a experience that's good to, good to feel when you're uh, figuring out your technique. Um, back to goals. Uh, do you have any like specific uh, numbers that you would like to hit? Uh, like in the clean and jerk or snatch or like your short term goals, what you're looking to hit soon? Um, well, Glenn has told me that I should be able to hit 80, 100 pretty soon. So I'm hoping I can hit that within the next um, next month or two months or so. Nice, eighty one hundred, and right now you're at seventy four ninety four. Seventy four ninety four. Yeah, I think that's doable, especially when we were. I was watching the uh, your snatches the other day, and it, it looks like you've got so much more in you, and it's just a matter of uh, putting the time in. Yep. Um, he has me working on a lot of stuff on snatch right now, so I have. A lot of stuff going through my head, but once that starts to become kind of a habit, a good habit, and I get rid of some bad habits, I think I'll hit some big numbers real soon. Oh, that's awesome. I mean, uh, I'm assuming, you know, most weightlifters' goal ultimately is to make the Olympics. And so uh, is that your ultimate goal in weightlifting? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, that's great. You know, that's what our team is for, is to have a bunch of people that aspire to make the Olympics, and we're excited to have you. Uh, we need to start wrapping this up real quick. Uh, you know, tell us about your, your uh, Twitter and your blog real quick. Um, okay, so my Twitter, I'm at rgerdon. That's at R-G-E-R-D-O-N. And then uh, my blog, I have a WordPress blog that's just Becca Gurdon at or dot WordPress dot com, and then I have a Tumblr blog where I kind of post more uh, about my training and pictures and that kind of stuff. So that's forever dash athlete dot Tumblr dot com. And she has been tweeting hashtag Watch My Pelvis a few times lately. It's getting big, folks. We gotta um, get it trending on on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. So check us out on Twitter. We're at WLiftingScoop. Uh, you can just search the Weightlifting Scoop on Twitter and uh, check out my blog, Dozer Strength, and James here. JamesTatumUSA.com.